All let's right, go. let's move on here. The Eastern Conference semifinal matchups are set with the Hawks and Cavs. Game one tonight in the Heat Raptors. Game one is tomorrow night. Now, according to Westgate Las Vegas Superbook, Cleveland, a heavy favorite at one to three, Toronto at six to one, and the Hawks in Heat are eight to one, respectively. So, Stephen A., how big of a lock are the Cavs now? Are we, are, am I allowed to talk basketball? I mean, we're not talking about, we're not giving it to Skip Naismith. No. You know, so we're, no. Not, we're not doing that. I, I didn't know, I, I didn't know I was allowed after that soliloquy he went on. Okay, fine. Thank you. That was I'm a so good opening I'm, segment I'm, by I'm, you I'm too. I'm so privileged. I'm so privileged that I get allowed to talk about basketball here. I don't give Atlanta much of a chance. I really, really don't. I think that they could potentially win two games in the series, most likely one on their home court in Atlanta. Uh, but outside of that, no. You know why? Because they don't have a closer. I'm very fond of Jeff Teague. I think he can really, really play. Um, Al Horford is who he is. I look at these guys like Scott and, and, and others, and I say, okay, they can make some noise. They can get something. And, of course, I can't ignore Millsap, uh, who's obviously a pivotal player on this team. But they're a team rife with second-tier players, but devoid of no go definitive go-to guy to close the deal for you. And I think because of that, you're going up against LeBron James, Kyrie, with Kevin Love, who deserves our respect. He's been playing good basketball. Um, I just don't see Atlanta having much of a chance in this series. I, a matter of fact, I'm fearful it will be a sweep, but I'm hopeful I'm wrong, and I want to show Budenholzer, who's an outstanding coach, and the team its due respect and deference and say that they'll probably win a game. Who knows? Maybe two. But I can't see it. I can't see more than one game, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if it were a sweep. I expect this to be easy breezy for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Mm. <sighs> Unfortunately, I agree with you, and then some. I believe the Cavs will sweep the Hawks right out of the playoffs. The Hawks in their closeout game at Boston very typically had six guys in double figures. Nobody scored over 20 points. And all of a sudden, little Dennis Schroeder is sharing point guard minutes with the guy you spoke of, Jeff Teague. So they, they basically played the same amount of time. And Schroeder had a really good game, 12 points and eight assists. So I, they're, they're just not talented enough to, to deal with a peaking Cleveland team. Cleveland was really good against Detroit because I had respect for Detroit and the games were all relatively close. Yeah, they were. And, and it was like sort of a competitive sweep, if you will. Yeah. But it was a sweep. And I thought Cleveland found itself in those four games. Now, the problem is they've had eight days off. Are they going to be a little rusty tonight? My Spurs weren't rusty after seven days off, and I was scared about that. But the point is I, I'm going to leapfrog ahead, and I'm going to go off what I saw from the Miami Heat in its game seven. And I'm going to say, I, I'm trying to dredge up some validation for the Heat to play with the Cavs. Just, just some. I, I'm trying to make a case in my head. I'm, I'm getting closer because they looked so good against Charlotte yesterday. But I just, I'm not sure. I want to see Dwayne Wade take his talents to Cleveland. That's what I want to see. Aren't we waiting for that? Isn't that what we're ready for? Now they got to get past Toronto without home court to start well, off with. Well, well, I believe they're going to beat Toronto. I believe Hassan Whiteside is going to be the difference. He's I hope so. He's a shot blocker in the game. And I think that, you know, it, it, it remains to be seen what's going to happen from what I'm being told uh, just from a repertorial perspective. Chris Bosh desperately wants to come back, as he pointed out on Twitter with his wife last yeah. week. The Miami Heat are reluctant to allow that to happen. Those blood clots, obviously, if you pointed out in the past, are serious matters. His whole thing is that it, it can't be, it, it ain't any worse than what the situation was last year. And, and, and I was ready to come back By last the way, year. is there any way he could sign a consent form well, and just I don't, say, I'm going to take I don't, the risk I don't myself? Know, but I, I, don't do, know. I do know that the Players Association, yeah. to some degree, is getting involved. Um, I do know that some experts are involved in the equation, and there are those, there are cynics out there who believe that he's being held from playing because Miami doesn't want to touch on a luxury tax number. Well, that's and as a result, you know, you don't, you, you know, you sit him out here and kind of, I, I, kind of, I don't want to say a wave or whatever. I want to make sure uh, because I just got some information about it last night, and I need to call Miami and find right. out more about it. But nevertheless, the bottom line is this: he wants to play. They're prohibiting him from playing. Who knows who's going to win that battle? In the event that he wins that battle, who knows what could happen? Because I'm of the mindset that Miami could give him a run, and if they didn't beat Cleveland, they could take a conference finals to seven games yep. against Cleveland. If Chris Bosh were healthy with the addition 
of Joe Johnson and those guys playing where they're playing. Me personally, regardless of what I saw from Goran Dragic yesterday, it was nice to see him being aggressive uh, and, and playing the way that he played. I don't know how well that's going to work against Cleveland. Um, I think this kid, Josh Richardson, is somebody I would rather have in there than him because I love the way Josh Richardson plays some defense, and he's capable of hitting big perimeter shots. In the end, um, I think that Miami will have a tough time with Toronto, however, because I think Toronto's got that proverbial monkey off their back now that they beat Indiana and yep. got out of the first round. But in the case of Cleveland, I don't expect Atlanta to pose much resistance. As a matter of fact, I think the only hope Atlanta has of uh, the best hope, I should say the only hope, but the best hope of Atlanta winning a game in this series is twofold in this tonight's game yep. because Cleveland had a layoff rust playing in the, in, coming into the equation. Or... If Cleveland manages to win their first two games in Cleveland, I think Atlanta's only hope is that obviously you got off nights in between games in the ATL, which could serve as a distraction. It can serve. That, 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 yeah. that, 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 now, 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 now LeBron, yes. Now LeBron usually reels folks in. And mm -hmm. J.R. Smith isn't the guy that he used to be. He's married now, home, you know, you know, he's a family man doing doing the right things. Uh, but nevertheless, I'm just saying the ATL can mm -hmm. be a, a distraction. It can it can do that. As can Lala, as can South Beach. Yes, right. right? That okay. is correct. Those and three. Tor uh, Toronto's not bad either, but especially oh, really? oh, Atlanta. Oh. Toronto's, Very Toronto's a nice city. Wow. It is, yeah, it is wow. a nice city. But then you got Dallas. You got Dallas you know. is nice too. I know. But I I'm just saying, happen. there are some places that are <laughs> Crystal, better. Things there, are some, there, are, there are some places hey. that are better than others, and Atlanta is a place yeah. where yeah. an unfocused individual could get himself yes. mm -hmm. in some trouble. Yes. Okay, Thank I got you it. for sharing I got that wisdom. I got it. <laughs> Back to Dwayne Wade. The most exciting moments for me of this past weekend were Friday, Friday night at Charlotte. Yes. This is it, man. This is do or die, basically. Yep. And Dwayne Wade showed up. Flashback, man. It, it, it was great. I, I love to watch him now. He's lost about He's lost 15, 15 pounds. pounds from last year. He's lost 15 year. pounds. Yeah. He's faster. He looks healthier now than he, he did last year. He looks healthier. He looks like Dwayne Wade to me. And he hadn't made a three since January the 16th, mm -hmm. and he makes two down That's the right. stretch. That's right. To and win then to the block game. the shot. And oh. then to block Kimba Walker shot from block, behind to yeah. seal the deal. Uh, I know some people in Charlotte were very upset that a foul wasn't it called. It was not a foul. I, I didn't think it was either. I thought Kimba flopped, but that's just me, mm -hmm. or at least exaggerated it. Yes. But the point is, Dwayne Wade took over a game they absolutely had to have at that moment, and they had it. And then I thought yesterday was a foregone conclusion at home, and I hope it's going to be a foregone conclusion against a very tough, well-coached Toronto team, because I need, for, for our sake, for the show's sake, if, if you will, to be selfish about it, I need to see Dwayne Wade and LeBron. I just need to see no what question. Well, we all TV? need to see that yeah. one. We all need to see that one. And by the way, everybody keeps saying D. Wade and LeBron. I'm going to bring up a name of an individual. He ain't playing, but he's just as important in that equation. Pat Riley and LeBron. Mm -hmm. Pat Riley, I'm telling you, Pat Riley. I'm not saying it was definitive, but Pat Riley was contemplated walking away from the game. And LeBron left like I ain't going anywhere. You understand? This man wants it. Okay, now he might, he might be a year away because who knows what he's going to pull off in free agency now. Okay, because he, he, might, he might be one piece away from another chip. But it's not like he's conceding this season mm. either. Mm. Um, Pat Riley, let's keep that name in that equation. I like it. We had it earlier, the 85 full circle. That's you know, a good point. Yes. You yeah, know who um, needs more than just one piece to get the chip? Probably the Cowboys. They had nine draft picks going into what? this week. Our Mel Kuyper, first thing I asked him when I saw him this morning on Mike and Mike, Cowboys a C. Skip, how would you and Stephen A. grade their draft? That's next. Stay tuned. A C. C? I wonder what the Giants got. Mm, I don't mm. know.